All right, we're working on App Inventor, and uh, I got the start of an app, and I want to add some sound. So I want to show you in this video tutorial how to add sound effects and sound loops. Now, um, a couple things, sound effects would be things like you click a button and you hear a sound, or you get an alert and it and alerts you, or, or just some kind of sound effect you might want to use. Um, you're more likely to use uh, only sound effects in a standard app. And go easy on it. Don't make it too wacky, right? Because unless your app is all about sound files. I actually had an app that had a lot of buttons, and each one played a, a different, um, different quote from a movie. So I picked my favorite movie quotes, and it was able to play it, whatever. All right, so that was one use of an app that it had to do with sound files. So we used it that way. But more, more likely than not, you're going to use sound files for games. And you can make games on App Inventor. And so I wanted to show you how we can load up. Uh, I'm going to do two things. I'm going to load up a sound effect and a sound loop. And I want to show you both of those because each one requires a little bit of different programming and a few different elements that you want to be aware of. Before I go any further, though, I want to just remind, I want to just show, point out a couple of websites. One is called findsounds.com, and it's a, just a search engine for finding sound files. I recommend you just do MP3 or WAV. You check these, you click in a search, you click search, and if you like the sound, we'll go ahead and play this sound. Okay, that's really annoying. Let's go down just a little bit further. Let's try this one out. All right, a little less annoying. So if you find a sound file you're looking for, on Find Sounds, you can just right click on the link and it's called Save Link As. And then that will save the file. I've already got a bunch of files. In fact, I already downloaded that particular one, so I'm gonna cancel that. But just note where you save your files. Put them all in one location so it's easier to find. So uh, if you're in a different browser, let's say you use Internet Explorer, um, Exploder. Uh, anyway, you can just right click, and in this case, it's save target as. And you want to make sure it's a WAV file and that you save it in the right folder. So let's find sounds.com. There's another great resource called flashkit.com. Flashkit.com, old website, but it still has a lot of great sound effects and sound loops. You look on Flash Kit, you can see sound loops over here. And then up to the right, way over here on the right, it's kind of broken. This website is sound effects. So if you go to sound effects, they've organized them by category. And then you even look down here, you can see the link to sound loops underneath it. And so here are sound loops. So you can dig, dig around, look for a loop that you want. And when you're ready, let's go ahead and take a look at, let's do an electronica one. I'm going to scroll down here. Uh, let's play Undisturbed, for example. It's a little more laid back, kind of behind the scenes. I'm feeling chill already. Yeah, that's right. All right, so let's say I want to do this particular one. You're going to need to click the link. And then you'll see a download link on here. So that's how you're going to get it. You just click download, and it should download uh, or not. You can, let's go back. You have the save video as. I'm going to go back and actually just right-click on the link itself, save link as. There it is. It's an MP3. I already got a copy of it, so I'm going to use that for my tutorial. So that's how you download the files. Okay, so let's say you've got your sound files, and you're ready to put it into your app. Okay, there's going to be a couple things you're going to need to decide. Number one, uh, how are you going to use the sound file? What, where does it appear? When does it appear? Why? All of that stuff. You're going to have to figure it out. So in my case, I'm just going to have a couple buttons that I'm going to use. One is going to play a sound. Actually, you know what? I'm going to use that alert for when I click the get message. And then I'm going to have another button I'm going to create to play a sound file. And then I'm going to have a separate one to stop the sound file. Okay, so and you can do any type of arrangement you want. I, you, I'm just going to show you a couple of them. So we already have a button here. I'm going to add two more buttons. I'm just going to drag them out, drop them in. And you should already know how to do buttons. So I'm going to go ahead and set these two buttons up and pause the video while I do it. So I renamed my two buttons. One is button play music, one is button stop music, but I gotta change the text on these. 
So I'm just going to go over here, text for a button, play music. And I'm going to click on this button, and I'm going to stop music. Now, you might have a sound file. You might choose to have it where you click it once to play it, click it again to stop it. That takes a little bit more programming, so I'm just going to keep it simple today. So now I've got three different types of buttons. Each one is going to have some functionality. So when I'm ready to add my music, I want to go to media. And one of the things you're going to notice, there are two types of media that are related to sound. One is called a player, and one is called sound. Okay. If you look here, player is multimedia. So I believe this actually works with other type. Uh, oh, yeah, it just says best for long sound files. Okay. And the sound component is more efficient for short files, such as sound effects, right there. Okay, so we're going to add a player for the music. We just drag it and drop it. And it, you'll notice it's non-visible. It, it, it shows up down here. So what I'm going to do is rename that one as well. Player, uh, play music. I'm going to have this actually match the button that's play music. The only difference is the name has the word player in front because it's a music player. And then I'm going to add sound. I'm just going to drag it and drop it, and I'm going to rename that. So that's just going to be sound. Play sound. Just keep it, keep it simple. Okay. So there you go. You, you got to add the components to play uh, that will to have the player and have the sound player. Okay. So we have two different ones. Remember, the players for long files. And this little sound one is for short files. So what we're going to do now is, uh, now we got our components, we got our buttons. All we need are the sound files and some programming. So I'm going to click Upload File. It's under Media, and it's down underneath Components. So you click Upload File, you click Choose File, and then you want to find where you stored your files. So here is the sound loop. I'm going to open that. Click OK. And it's uploading. And you see how it took a while to upload? Keep that in mind for your app. The more, the larger your files are, the bigger your app is going to be. Okay. And then I'm going to add um, two more sound effects. I'm going to try, I think, I think we did a, no, we did, what was it? Uh, oh, there's another one I used called Gong. I'm going to use that one. Click OK. All right, there it is, Gong. Okay. So now I have two files here, okay? Once I get those files, I have one last thing to do on this window. The last thing I need to do is associate a component with the file that goes with it. So I click player and I pick the sound loop, click okay. And I cl click this one, I click source and I choose gone. Now, the other thing I could have done is just clicked it and uploaded a file right there. So that's another way of doing it. So if you have a new file, you can just click Upload here. It'll be that much quicker. So I've got my sound files. I got my buttons. Now it's time to program. OK, when you're ready to program, uh, let's start by clicking on the, um, the button. OK, we already have this when the button is clicked, what are we going to do? We're going to play a sound using the sound effect speaker. So I go over to the component, I find the sound item, and I see there's the call sound play sound dot play. So I'm just going to drag that out and I'm going to add it right to the top. All right, so it's going to play a sound, and then I probably would like it to wait a little bit, um, but I'll I'll deal with that just in a little bit. Um, I want to just go to the next part, which is playing a sound file. So we're going to go to the play button music. And we have a when the button music click. So when we click on the button, we are going to now play the sound, which is the sound loop. So we click the player, play music, and we're going to start it. Okay, and not only that, uh, I gotta, we might also notice there is, we can loop it or not. 
So one of the things I'm going to do is, since it is a sound loop, I'm going to loop it. I'm going to do it by going back to Designer. I'm going to click on the player, and I'm going to check loop. So that makes it so it loops. So I go back to Blocks, and now when we press the button to play music, it plays, it starts the music. I'm going to get the stop music, and when that is clicked, we're going to stop the music. Okay, so we're going to start with that to begin with, and we're going to test it out on our app. So when you're ready, of course, you want to click Build, App, Provide QR Code, let it build, and then try it out on a device. If you don't have your own device, you're going to want to install the emulator and use it instead. I'm going to use a device because I've got one. Okay, let's try to load it up. You heard that sound? That was the sound of my QR code scanning it. And I'm just going to open it up and we'll listen to it and see if we can see how that works. Okay, we're going to try this one more time. Um, I've got my app here. It's got the QR reader. There we go. You'll see over here that it's downloaded. I just click OK. And it's going to download it. Hopefully it'll open up pretty soon. Okay, since I've already downloaded it before, it tells me I don't need any permissions, but I still have to install it. All right, so we've installed it. Let's play the music. I don't know if you can hear that. And I'm going to stop it. There we go. It stopped. Let's get the message. Please enter a message there we go. box on your screen, and I will repeat back what you said. Okay. So now all of that seems to work on the device. We're good there. But every now and then you may get an error message. Let me show you what that is and what to do about it. All right. Sometimes when you're working with sound files, you might get this App Inventor error 703. 703. This is a sound unable to play a sound file error. And it might depend on the type of sound file it is. It, it looks like it happens to be related to MP3. Now, I didn't have that problem today, but I've had it in the past. Okay, well, let me just show you what you got to do. So in order to get this to work, you do a thing called initialize sound component with every file at screen initialize. So what does that look like? Initialize a screen has to do with the screen and you have the when screen is initialized. And you click on here when it's initialized. What are you going to do? So what you do is you just do the set sound, play sound, source, to, and you give it the file name. Okay? And so then the file name, you're going to have to go back to designer to get that name. So in this case, this is the name of it. I'm just going to click on here and get the file name just by clicking on it there and copying that. So then I'm going to cancel that, cancel here, cancel here, go back to the block, and then we're going to set the source using text. You just grab text, grab it here, and you paste in that file name. So then that, what that does is that when the screen is initialized, it'll start doing what it needs to do to load up the sound file to go with the sound source. And you might probably want to do that with the sound file as well, too. And in this one, it is, um, oh, it looks like it's old, that's only works for the sound play sound file. So it only, you don't even need it for the player. So we need to change that sound file to the other name, but that's how you change it. So it looks like it's a, an issue with the sound player and nothing else. So in that case, that was actually gong dot wave, like so. And then this should allow you to spare having some of the downloading issues and it just allows it to start loading up the sound file before they click it. And that's basically how you load up and play sound files on your innovation or on your uh, App Inventor app.